Oh, Bob. Back at it again with your awful designing. But don't worry, today's the day we're gonna fix that. And to everyone watching, if you're just like Bob and just starting out in Photopea, then this tutorial is for you. Let's start from the very beginning. Together, we're gonna learn everything you need to know to master Photopea, step by step. And maybe, just maybe, Bob will finally be able to create something that doesn't look like that. When you open Photopea, you'll see a layout similar to Photoshop. Don't let it intimidate you, I'll break it down in detail. So the first thing you wanna do is create a new project. So click on new project right here. Here are a bunch of preset sizes for whatever you want. So YouTube cover, which is a YouTube banner, Twitter header, YouTube thumbnail, then there's print, photo, screen, mobile, ads. So if you don't know what size it is, you can either Google it or look here and see if you can find it. Personally, I just type it in because I know what it is. So 1920 by 1080 is 1080p, for example. So we'll just go with 1920 by 1080. It's a pretty standard size. Pro tip, double check those numbers or you'll end up like Bob here. If you need to fix it, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So here is your DPI. So keep it at 72 for most web projects and 300 for print designs. Pick a background color or leave it transparent for more flexibility. It just depends on what you want to make. So transparent for transparent backgrounds and white for most things. And you can end up adding your own background as well if you want. And then click create. If you need to fix your size later on, go to image canvas size and type in the proper size. Okay, so here's an introduction to Photopea's interface. The toolbar is on the left. This is where you'll find all the tools like the move tool for repositioning, the marquee tools for selections, and the brush tool for creative painting. Hover over each tool to see its name and shortcut. You can also right click on them if they have this little arrow at the bottom right, and there's actually more tools within that tool. Next we have the layers panel and it's on the right. Think of layers as transparent sheets stacked on top of each other. Double click the layer name to change it or right click for additional options. You can also double click that layer and get even more options, the layer style menu, which I'll dive into later. At the top, you'll see a menu bar for advanced options and adjustments. From here, you can access filters, image settings, and more. Finally, the properties bar at the top right here. It changes depending on what tool you have selected. Easy there, Bob. Let's take it one step at a time. Now that we have a canvas, let's add some elements. To add text, select the T tool from the toolbar, click your canvas, and start typing. You may notice that your text is really small and you cannot even see it. So if you go up to the top, you'll see a bunch of options up here. This is how you'll edit your text. So if you hit Control A, it'll select all of your text, and you can change the color up here to whatever you want. I'll also show you how to make gradient colors later on. For the size, the max it goes is 150, but you can go even bigger by typing it in manually. Here you can also change the font as well. And there's hundreds of fonts already in Photopea. Up here you'll see a warp button. If you click on that, there's a ton of cool options you can do with your text. You can arc it, bulge, rise. There's tons of options to make your text look really awesome. Hit that check mark when you're done, and now you have some pretty cool text. To free transform this layer, click Ctrl, Alt, and T on your keyboard, and a bunch of boxes will pop up. There you can grab one of the boxes and drag with your mouse to make it big. Or if you hold Shift while dragging, you can squish it however you want. To add an image to your canvas, go to File, Open in Place, click the file, and it'll bring it into Photopea. Or you can simply drag the file from your file explorer into your project, and it'll appear the same. There you can resize it. Click that check mark when you're done. When you're dragging an image, you'll see red lines pop up. That is because that means you are in the middle of the image. And if you drag it straight to the middle, it'll look like a crosshair. Now let's say you want to duplicate this layer. Click either Control C and Control V or click Control J. That'll duplicate your layer. And now let's say we want to rotate this. Click Control Alt and T to free transform it. Hover outside of the box a little bit and it'll look like this. And then you can drag your mouse and rotate the image. Click that check mark once you're done. Let's see what Bob's doing. Bob, were you even paying attention? Look how small your text is. It looks like it's a hidden Easter egg. Anyways, we'll come back to him in a second. Next, we are going to go over basic layer management. Layers are the foundation of good design and managing them effectively is key. To rename a layer, double click on its name in the layers panel. To rearrange the layers, simply drag them up or down in the panel. The higher the layer is, the closer it appears to the viewer. Keeping your layers organized helps when working on complex projects. If you guys have been watching my channel, you know that I suck at this. Use layer masks to hide parts of a layer without permanently deleting them. Click the raster mask button down at the bottom right. Go to your brush tool on the left side of your screen in the toolbar section. Make sure that one of these boxes is black and the other is white. One is for deleting and one is for adding. And then up here you can adjust the size of your brush 
as well as the hardness. Or you can hold Alt on your keyboard and right click on your mouse and drag it right to make it bigger, left to make it smaller, up to make it softer, and down to make it harder. And then once you have your black one as the top one, you can draw and erase part of the image to blend it with the other image. To apply blending modes, click the drop down at the top of the layers panel. Experiment with different modes like screen, multiply, color dodge, overlay. They all do different things and have different times when you'll need to use them. But if you have a black background on an image, screen is the way to go to remove it. You can group layers by selecting them on the right side by holding control and clicking them or holding shift on the top and then clicking shift while left clicking on the bottom one. Going up to layer and clicking group layers or clicking control G on your keyboard. Or if you wanna make them all one individual layer, I like going to convert to smart object and it'll make it one layer. Oh no, Bob accidentally drew on Sonic's face. Don't worry, Bob, hit control Z to undo. Undo is your best friend, or you can go up to edit and step backward if you need to undo multiple actions. Next up, we got adjustment layers. Adjustment layers allow you to make non-destructive edits to your project. So let me show you. Go to the bottom of the layers panel and click the adjustment layer button. Choose from options like brightness and contrast, hue and saturation, or even color balance. If you want to do all this, but just apply it to one singular layer, then I'd recommend going up to image adjustments and clicking it here instead. It'll apply it to only that layer. Now, if you go down here and do it, let's do brightness and contrast, for example. It'll apply it to every layer below it. So we could have a thousand layers under here and it'll affect all of them. Or if we drag it below layer one, it'll affect everything below layer one. So let's tweak the brightness and contrast. If you move up on this slider, up on this slider, or you could even go down on the sliders, you can make the image look really good. Let's go to curves and try out curves. I recommend curves to make every image pop a little bit more. All you have to do is go up on this line a little bit and down on this line. It works every time. If you remember earlier, I showed you a raster mask and how you could erase it and add stuff to it with the brush tool. These adjustment layers come with the raster mask already on it. So if I go to my brush tool again, I can actually erase the curves or I can bring it in by clicking X and switching it back to the white one. Another one that comes in handy with most designs is if you go to hue and saturation, you can adjust the color of the image with just this slider. It works really well with designs like this because it makes the image still look good no matter what color you choose. Bob, less is more, buddy. Let's dial that back a bit. Next, we're going to be working on layer styles. Layer styles are my favorite part about Photopea and they're also a powerful way to add effects like shadows, glows, and strokes to your layers. This will really make your design stand out. To add a layer style, double click on the layer you want to edit. So for example, I'm gonna go with background. It'll open the layer style panel where you'll do all your work. Let's start out with color overlay for the background. If you check that box, it'll enable the color overlay. There you can adjust the blend mode, the opacity, or change the color of it. Now let's say this is kind of bland and you want something more. Well, there's a gradient overlay button right here. Make sure you uncheck the color overlay or else it'll overlap the gradient overlay. If you go into here, you'll see even more settings. You don't really have to worry about this. All you wanna worry about is this one right here. So if you click on it, you'll see a bunch of boxes pop up. You'll wanna focus on these down here. So if you double click it, you can choose the color from yellow to red, for example. Or if you click below this bar, you can add even more and have a multicolor gradient background. And you can drag them and adjust them. Once you're done, click OK. Or you can adjust the scale as well, which I recommend doing sometimes. And the style, you can change it to make it a circle or like it was before. And there's a bunch of other options as well you can mess around with. There's no right way to do this. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. It's completely subjective. Now we're going to add some text and add some layer styles to that. So go to your text tool on the left and type in your text. If you remember from earlier, you'll know how to do this. Go ahead and make your text bigger and change the color to white. I'm gonna change the font as well because I want a thicker font to show off these uh, layer effects. We'll go with indigo, which is a really good one. Check mark, control alt T if you remember, and drag it. Double click on that layer to open your layer style menu. And now we're going to go over some of the most commonly used effects. First one being the drop shadow. The drop shadow creates a shadow behind your layer for depth. You can adjust the angle, distance, and size for the perfect look. Next one we got is stroke. It has an outline around your layer. You can choose the color right here. You can adjust the thickness and the position of where the stroke actually is. So you can put it inside your text or outside. Next we got outer glow. It creates a glowing effect around your layer 
You can customize the color here. I recommend adjusting the color, the opacity, the blend mode to either color dodge, overlay, screen, or normal, and the spread and size. Those are the only ones that I ever mess with. Next we got is 3D, which is a really cool feature that they just added not too long ago. This will make your text 3D. I'd recommend adjusting the distance, the shrink, the angle, and the color. That's all I mess with. But it's super quick and you can make some really cool 3D text using this. Each effect can be toggled on or off with this check mark here, or by going to your layer, clicking this arrow, and clicking the eyeball. A pro tip I have is if you want to save this layer style, go to define new. Then when you make new text, you can click this button and click it to apply it to every new text you make without having to do all this over again. Once your masterpiece is ready, it's time to export. Go to file, export as, JPEG for smaller files, PNG for transparency, or SVG for scalable graphics. I'm gonna go with JPEG. Adjust the quality slider here to balance file size and image clarity. For most web uses, 70 to 80% works perfectly. But you'll notice the difference between 100% and 99% size-wise is crazy. So sometimes if it says the file's too big on whatever I'm trying to upload it on, I go to 99% and it cuts it to like half. For professional printing, I recommend TIFF or PDF for the highest quality. Don't adjust the size here or else it'll squish your image. I recommend going up to image and canvas size like I showed you earlier. It's definitely a better way to do it. Once you're done, click save and it'll save it to your file explorer. As you see here, it just says new project too. I'm back at it again with not naming my freaking files. I'm sorry about that. Guys, please do it. It'll make your life so much easier. I just need to take my own advice. So that's it for this beginner tutorial. We covered the basics of Photopea from understanding the interface to creating your first project, adding elements, managing layers, using adjustment layers, exporting layer styles, and exporting your work. Bob's getting there and so will you. Who knows, maybe you'll surpass Bob in no time. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.